year as you go through the, the league, year two, three, four, your foundation will continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and they want you to retire. You know, I can tell hey, man, you need to come to man. Come to it, get out of here, man. Yeah. 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 these houses. You yeah. bring your rookies here every year, you know what yeah. I'm saying? After they try to get drafted, yo man, boy, that summer hit, man, I'm gonna take you to after, just change the perspective before the season starts. It, right. It's about your partnerships, man. It's about the people that you associate with, your associates. That I always just don't make it about you. Like, when I do this, you know, I'm gonna bring y'all in. Go like, like that's I'm a facilitator. So all I want to do is facilitate everybody. So when you start your foundation, I'm gonna facilitate you too. So it's just you, you you give you're giving to each other and you can't do anything but grow. How can you not? You know? Because you're doing it for the right reason. When did it start up on day? 2006. 2006. 2006. Five years ago. Yeah. Wow. And what inspired you to start? Came up with nothing. It was, you know, from a hardworking blue collar family. And, you know, I've always, I've always wanted to give back to the world's most poor. Like, even when I remember being like four or five years old, you know, watching little babies on TV starting with the, you know, then it was Ethiopia that had all the babies. And I just, the, the, the vision of that. And, you know, my dad used to like send money to support a couple of kids here and there. And I've always said, you know, I, one day I want to be able to do that. I didn't know what it took. And then I was blessed enough to meet, um, to meet the ambassador to Malawi, who then introduced me to the then foreign minister of Malawi. And I went there and it changed my life. And since then, my foundation started off focusing on education, which we still do, educational initiatives. But now we've, you know, went solely Almost full full tilt on economic development, you know, particularly through sports and um, things like that. I have a friend of mine who started an organization that's called Play for Development, mm -hmm. and they're also working with IDB and they're just starting to get going on that. But they do mostly like soccer, but they also have that idea of like economic growth through sports, through development. Because you build, you know, discipline, you train people to have a goal to reach. To. I, I think, I like. As, that's how I see sports, you know, because I used to play a lot of sports in, in high school as well. Not too much in high school. Soccer, and basketball, volleyball. I used to run the bike a little bit. So I know that sports really teaches you values that you can apply from different aspects of your life as well. So, you know, you don't really think about how much, like, what you learn in a game can really help you in life. You know, the determination to keep going. You know, it might be difficult, you know, you might be losing at that point and there might be no hope in the last point, you know, it's like five minutes left of the game, I don't know. So it's kind of like how life is, you know, there's sometimes where like you feel like you don't have no time left and you're under pressure, but you know, you kind of gather that strength and you look at those that are there to support you. And so, so I think it's really cool, like, I, I think I already mentioned to, to most of you that I really appreciate, you know, I, I'm more towards the NGO, like, on the field type of work, but I think, like, the role of celebrities and people with access to resources and access to contacts and access to media, you know, the more noise that we can all make to, to bring to consciousness, like, the reality of, of how many people around the world are living, you know, even in the United States, like, in D.C., it's, some people are sleeping on the streets. You know, it's like nobody seems to be talking about it. I mean, if they do, it's not a, a thing that's like an urgent issue to solve. It's like, oh, it's there, but it just kind of stays there. You know? so, so I, know, I, I wish you the best and you know, the work that you do. And I'm sure that you know we're gonna cross paths again somewhere. No I'll be in Fabian's office. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. We make a lot of magic happen in that office. <laughs> in whose office? Fabian Coase. Oh, okay. You know him?